In a studio that's in a basement comes the epic story of how two friends changed the future of the movie podcast game forever. <laughs> the reviews are in. Boys Life Magazine gives the High Sci Podcast four and a half acorns. The Daily Bugle says, these guys are super legit. And Pope Francis declares the podcast as life affirming. From the kid who tried to get smart with David Spade and got fucking old. You're still out. You're still back. And the guy who can name all four Baldwin brothers. Alec, William, Daniel, and the baby boy, Stephen. Live from the studio of his parents' basement, the Have You Seen It podcast. Welcome back to the Have You Seen It podcast. My name is Mason Knight, and sitting across from me is the one and only Cash Krause. Yes, sir. How's it going? Good to be back. It's good to be back, yeah? Feels good. My ass went right back into the seat. Right back in place. Into the indent that I've left here that now no one can sit in there because... They can't because it's, no uh, one's ass has formed to the It's chair a Goldilocks situation. Yeah, it too yeah, hot, too, too cold. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can't fit in this. Thing. We can't. all know the tale. <laughs> that old chestnut. Yeah. It's a great story. But great uh, story. yeah, absolutely. It's been a little while. It we has. Had, we yeah. took a, a little bit of a break. Yep. But uh, had to get some, some stuff done we in the did. studio. Yep. And uh, we're renovating and uh, we're going to have a new studio in about a week or so. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. And, It'll be a uh, new design and everything. Yes, so. every 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 harvest moon we like to change up the <laughs> no. studio. If you have fallen the hit every or third eclipse, history, we yeah. like to. Uh, yeah, we just don't like uh, staying in one spot. Yeah, we don't like to be too comfortable. No. Change is good. Change, change is, is good. good. It's the switches things spice up. Spice of life makes you, makes you quick on your feet. Exactly. Oh, yeah, absolutely. we don't want to get too comfortable no, any time. No, no, so no. we like to change it up, but. Uh, that will probably be the last one for a while, I It'll assume. It'll be, yeah, for at least a year. <laughs> <laughs> at least. But, uh, yeah, so that's why we took a break. But we are back for are. A, a throwback theater, and uh, you picked a heavy, heavy hitter to come back to. Oh, my God. But this is a, a, gold this is a phenomenal star. film. Yeah, 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 you did. You picked a heavy, a film that I just can't just flip on anytime you know i can't it's not like a film where like happy gilmore no matter where in happy gilmore <laughs> right. i flip and i can i can watch mm-hmm. happy gilmore yeah uh we, we are doing we should say we are doing one flew or the cuckoo's nest yes. but yeah when it when i see one flew or the cuckoo's nest i can't just flip it on i have to be like uh in the mood absolutely yeah. i gotta sit down and i gotta be i gotta watch it from start to beginning i can't just watch it in the middle but i have to sit down and Nothing else can be happening around me. I can't yeah. be like doing homework and no, just glancing nope. up at this film because this is just such a heavy, heavy fucking film. To it's me. a heavy film and it's heavy dialogue too, and you really got to pay oh, attention. Oh yeah, you know? and heavy, heavy performance. Yeah, I mean from everyone. from everyone, everyone is. But it, it relies heavily on those performances. But yes. yeah, it's a movie I've seen a million times, and I wasn't sure we were ever gonna review it on here. But uh, I'm glad we are. Well, it, it's a big one. It was predominant on Netflix right now. Uh, a lot of the reasons because the show Ratchet, yes, which is based on, yeah, uh, obviously Doctor Ratchet uh, from well, Nurse the, Ratchet or Nurse, yeah, n- yeah. Nurse. She did not nurse have an Ratchet. MD. She didn't. They didn't let women no. be doctors back then. <laughs> In the but 60s. man, did she have a cold, cold stare, dude? Holy crap! Well, uh, well, yeah, she's. I mean, we we'll talk about it, but she is arguably. Uh, the most effective villain in cinema, in my opinion. Mm, yeah. I mean, more she's more scary in to, to me than Freddy or Vader or anyone. She's or like Hannibal Lecter. She is just pure fucking evil. She's just a <laughs> bad fucking egg man, and that's just how good that she fucking does in yeah. this role. But uh, Louis Fletcher. Yep. Who plays her? But yeah, man, only uh, only one of three films to ever win the big five at the Oscars. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Is is nutty, and it didn't. It wasn't uh, that achievement wasn't achieved again for another thirty years until I think there's only, Silent of the yeah, Lambs. Silent of the Lambs in 1991, yeah. and the big five is best actor, best, best director, director, best picture, yep. best screenplay, best screenplay, and best actress. Actress. The big five. five. It's That's it's an insane. Oscar Grand Slam, which is fucking nuts, dude. It doesn't happen. Yes. The before this, so this movie came out in 1975. 75. Before this, it was uh, 
What's the film? Oh, it happened one night, and that was in 1934. So uh-huh. this did not come out for another 40 years. Not another. It doesn't happen, and I don't no. think. I'm not even sure if it will happen again in our lifetime. I don't think so. I mean, it hasn't happened in our lifetime at once. Maybe Doom. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but Doom. Not it can't. It can't be Best Actress because it's just not like a a lead yeah, actor. I mean, that's yeah, getting a lot because there's yeah. so many characters in that. So I, I I don't know. It's it's like the perfect storm. You know, mm-hmm. everything has to be because sometimes things will win for Best Screenplay and not be nominated at all for Best Picture. Yep. Sometimes it'll win for Best Picture and not be nominated for Best Director. So it's it, there's only been 43 films that have been nominated for all five. Wow. Yeah, out of the, In the history thousand. of it. Yeah. <laughs> Out of the thousand, although I think Lord of the Rings has the most with eleven eleven nominations. Jesus, yeah. it's insane. But it I did not. Imagine. It did not win five though. I mean, yeah. it didn't win the fucking the big five, but eleven nominations. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> that's a huge accomplishment. But uh, yeah, Nurse Ratchet. I think she is just one of the the greatest villains. Louise Fletcher obviously deserved the Oscar. Yeah. I mean, oh, absolutely. But yeah, why why I was nervous to talk about this film is because this film is like you know regarded as. You know, the holy fucking grail of a film when you talk about film. It's right. whenever any critic has a top ten list, the one flew over the cuckoo's nest is always, always on. on. Because yeah. it just has so many, you know, it it made Danny DeVito. It it's did. so weird seeing him as Martini, but such a fucking good role for him. Perfect. Such, all of the mental patients in this are, I mean, it's, they do such a good job. It's. And all the extras, by the way, were or real mental patients. So mental it's really patients, yeah. yeah. And this was filmed in Salem, Oregon. Yeah, we got to this is one of few films that I know so much about because it was filmed close. To, mm-hmm. I, I know a lot about Short Circuit. I know a lot about The Goonies. I know a lot <laughs> about Goonies. Kindergarten Cop yeah. because it was all filmed in like our neck of the woods. Yep. And, and I know a lot about One Flew Over the Cuckoo's oh. And fucking Twilight. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know anything about Twilight. Nor do I. Yeah. yeah. For some reason, it's all things in Oregon. Yeah. <laughs> I keep out of any film. Sleepless in Seattle. I don't know anything about. I, I couldn't tell. There's you. a lot of iconic films filmed in Oregon. Not too many in Washington. No. no, no, never. I mean, there's a band. Few. There's band there's films always play yeah. in Seattle because that's like a real, you know, musician kind of city. Mm. But no, there's there. Yeah, I mean, Oregon's definitely one. But this is one film. Yeah, that I know a lot about because it was filmed at the Oregon State Hospital, which is I've drove them past, but you can't go to because it's still a fully functioning. Mental hospital, mental yeah. health hospital. Yeah. <laughs> Not much has changed, so you can't. Uh, although they have knocked down what most of it that you see in one floor of Cuckoo's Nest, but they do have like the main guards building, I think, still mm-hmm. that you can go to. But uh, yeah, because you got to renovate, yeah, because it's a hospital, of course. So you can't. You got to knock down that asbestos. <laughs> you got to get it out of there. Yeah, every 30, 40 years, <laughs> <laughs> you got it. But uh, but yeah, it, it's it's crazy, and I'm always proud of that for some reason that it was filmed. Like I had anything to right. do with it. We didn't like we didn't, I had any. We weren't role. even Although alive. I was born in yeah. in Oregon, so there you give go. me that much credit. Well, you got a little credit there, my guy. But uh, yeah, all all the performances. I mean, you could probably give an Oscar nomination to anyone here. Yeah. Christopher Lloyd, his debut film. Yeah, insane, insane. It is. And if you don't know about Christopher Lloyd's history, his family came over on the Mayflower. Wild. His, like, great uncle owns, like, the Texaco Oil Company. <laughs> so I'd he's, say like, well off. <laughs> he's very, <laughs> he comes from this crazy, like, long, like, he can trace his lineage back. But, yeah, his grandpa was on, like, the mate with fucking Christopher Columbus. But he has a crazy, crazy life. But that's it's, a guy that you to think about is, like, oh, rich people make the best famous people. People mm-hmm. because they have all the time and money to go on yeah. these unpaid. That's Christopher Lloyd, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but he didn't get. But he was older in this. So he didn't get yeah, his he start was. till until yeah. he was later. So it's not like he was like uh, his Texaco grandpa got him the role or anything <laughs> like that. I think he did it on his own merit. And what? Yeah, He's exactly. Great. And he is a great actor in all seriousness. I mean, Doc Brown is one of the most iconic yeah. roles of all time, and he plays Tabor in this. Yeah. And Max it's, Tabor, it's a great, a great role. He's he's one of the patients that's like, he's one of the few ones that is not voluntarily in there. Mm-hmm. We end up finding out midway through yeah. that a lot of, uh, well, I'll go over the quick premise. So it stars Jack Jack Nicholson. Mm-hmm. You know, we haven't even talked about him. I've, he's, I he's pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'd say he's pretty good. He's, and man, that that scene even in the very beginning yeah. too. And he plays the very iconic uh, McMurphy, yep. and he is a a con man slash career criminal, mm-hmm. and uh, he is pretending 
quote unquote, he thinks he's pretending, but uh, that he is Mentally he's pretty Ill. ill to get out of jail. Yes, because he's done. He has this big long rap sheet. Yep. And if they find out that he's not mentally ill, they'll send him to a uh, work camp, prison farm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Prison farm. which which you just doesn't you're breaking fun. rocks yeah. for over eighteen hours a day. Yeah. So he really doesn't want to go. But I think the more I watch this film, the more I'm almost convinced, like throughout the thing, that he should be in there. Like he's one of the few people that should actually be in there, just mm. because of the way he's willing to manipulate anyone. To at any way. time, yeah, yeah, and you kind of get this hint. Well, he, he talks about, it, but he's he f- f- gets in fights constantly. Yep. you know he can't he can't hold a job down. He might be one of the few people that are actually until the very last scene when he's has the opportunity to jump out the window. Mm-hmm. I think that's the scene that only shows you, oh, he, he shouldn't be in here. Yeah, that's the only scene. But but throughout, even when I watch it from the first time when I watch it now, I think, oh God, this guy is fucking crazy. Like there's something is seriously wrong with him, yeah. and maybe this is the best place for him, but not when you're up against Nurse Ratchet. No, because no. although you may, there may be an argument that Nurse Ratchet does care about and that she is sympathetic to the patients, but she's fucking power hungry for sure. She definitely is. She's on a. Uh, and Louise Fletcher said that she hated like prepping for this role. Well, so you would much. have to. It's the role is so vile and so yeah. disgusting that, and I heard. Everyone was just appalled, even by the performance. Mm-hmm. That everyone kind of, you know, was very scared of her by the end of it. She she said she didn't watch her performance for years. Yeah, yeah, that's tough, man. That's yeah, tough. It's and not this easy. is, but yeah, that's just how good the performance is. You know, when you when you can't even look at yourself like that because yeah. the character again is so fucking evil. Yeah. So it'd be like seeing yourself play Hitler. In my opinion, dude. <laughs> yeah. She's so bad. She's fucking... And how she treats Billy, it's bad, man. She's... Yeah. It's tough love for sure. But it's like... And it's supposed to be like that because it's... Yeah, I think it's 1975 mental yeah. uh, health institute. It's well, I mean, not the greatest. Electroshock therapy. It's like your, your stereotypical evil oh, yeah. villain. You oh, know, yeah. like where they do just horrific things to people who are mentally ill thinking that they're doing the right thing. You know, it, it reminds me a lot of like the civil war where they're, you know, men are bleeding on the battlefield and they're like, Oh, well you have to, you have to bleed out all the bad blood, you know, like oh, the, just like backwards thinking. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, we, as do, they're losing uh, we do actually still use shock therapy surprisingly enough. But uh, for depression and stuff, but yeah, not as heavily not as this. To, no, and yeah, it's not, not an to overall the extent of what they do. Yeah, and it's shown that if you do it constantly, just to have you It'll know everlasting problems. Yeah. But the worst thing that they do is the uh, what's it called the the ice pick in the I uh, I forget what that's called lobotomy lobotomy yes God it's the whole thing they end up giving him one at the end spoiler yep. alert unfortunately. But yeah, the lobotomy. I mean, that's that's a thing that was very real throughout the fucking. I think they're getting the lobotomy into like the late eighties. God, bro. that's insane. It's horrifying. It's fucking. Look up the guy. He wasn't the guy who invented it, but he was like he was like the salesman for lobotomies in the United States. He did over. He did like ten thousand. He did the Kennedys, uh, Rose Kennedys lobotomy. Fucking botched it. She was a a vegetable for the rest of her life. But uh. And uh, someone plays him in a movie that's really... Oh, Jeff Goldblum plays him in a movie. Wow. But the guy, but yeah, he, he made the money off like uh, commercializing the lobotomy. If you don't know what that is, it's they stick an ice pick into your eye. Mm-hmm. And then they just kind of scrape it around until it scrapes up against your frontal lobe. And it yeah. takes away... The best case scenario, it just takes away all personality you mm-hmm. have. Yeah. Most of the time, it just left you like you can't feed yourself. You can't go to the bathroom. You're just a fucking zombie. Walking zombie. Yeah, and that's what happens to uh, McMurphy. Jack. But yeah. I got a feeling they weren't being so careful on his lobotomy. I would say not. <laughs> I got a feeling there was some no. fucking, they had the janitor in there. And it's kind of sad and, and poetic in a lot of ways, too, because he, he was midway through the film, he was joking around about that. When he walked into the room after they took him to the electro oh, shock yeah. therapy the first time. Joking in about how his like brain was mush, and then he's like, oh, "I got you, bastards!" And then at the end of the film, like that actually came true, and I love it. I love uh, uh, Samson, 
Bill Sam. What's his uh, What's his name? Chief. In the film? Chief. Oh, you Duh. Duh. Chief. That's one thing about this film. You got to remember Chief. it's 1975 because there yes. is some very insensitive. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just Just jokes about mental patients, and, but that's what the movie is like. Supposed to be showing is oh, like of course. this yeah. is how it was. Yeah. Like they just threw these people. Well, that's in what here. Mick Murphy was. I mean, yeah. the first time he met him, he started doing the whole like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, thing and like yeah. jumping around the room, and you're just like, oh my god, this is so inappropriate. I know, and then he became best friends. Yeah, they did. That was nice. That was awesome. Chief is one of the the, the greatest characters mm-hmm. in cinema. He's just uh, he's someone hey, who is and he's smart too. Well, he is he a uh, faking it. he is a purposely mute, which is a, a real psychological thing too. When someone you know has really bad trauma and they just decide not to ever talk again, it's yeah. fucked up. It's crazy to think about. But yeah, people thought he was deaf the entire <laughs> yeah. time. Yep. They were constantly talking shit around. They were. <laughs> At some like this point. This big dumb. <laughs> this dumb he can't hear a thing. You know, like a, but no, yeah, they thought he was completely deaf. He was very Ill- illiterate. <laughs> he yeah. spoke quite poetically. He yeah, then when he's talking about his dad and everything. But uh, but yeah, the, funny enough, the author of the book, because this is based on a book, uh, he never, he refused to watch the movie. <laughs> Yeah, because in the book, the entire thing is told from Chief's perspective. Chief's perspective, yeah. Yeah, so they changed that and told it from McMurphy's perspective. And the guy said, "Fuck that on there." Which is there's so many of those instances where it's an amazing movie, and the author will hate it, yeah. like uh, Stephen King hating The Shining. The Shining <laughs> hated it. <laughs> hated it. So Ken Kesey was his name, and he uh, the author of the yeah. book, and he had a really funny story too. He goes, he he never saw the film. You know, was 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 pissed off because of the reason that we just brought up. And he was flipping through the TV one day at night, you know, watching TV. And he started watching the film without knowing it was his right away. And he goes, huh, this seems like an interesting premise. Got about 10 minutes through uh, into the movie, realized it was based on his book and goes, nope. <laughs> so he still never saw. Yeah, never I ended guarantee up seeing he's the movie. still cashing those royalty checks, though. Of course. Well, <laughs> so that bastard who uh, I won't watch it, but I'll yeah. fucking cash the checks. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the budget for this film because it was three million dollars back in nineteen seventy five, which is quite a bit, which is a lot of money. I mean, yeah. yeah, and especially when they're only filming. I think the I think they talk about the most expensive scene was when they go. To Depot Bay, a yeah, part of the fishermen. Yeah, that yeah. I've been, I've been there a million times. It's awesome seeing that where they go into the bridge, but uh, fucking super dangerous for fishermen. Uh, so yeah. a bunch of mental, <laughs> so you kind of <laughs> cringe when you see a bundle, a bunch of mental patients. Yeah. And that scene's funny too because he's like saying, "Doctor Martini." Doctor yeah, that's this, hilarious. Doctor Chief. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but yeah, I think that was the most expensive because they had to go out and like rent a boat and all that yeah. shit. But yeah, and this three million. This film, yeah, three million. Turn around to the box office and made a hundred and sixty three point two five million dollars. And something interesting about this too was Jack Nicholson signed a contract early on saying he would take a significant pay cut and just get royalties and residuals on the back end. And sure enough, that paid off. For yeah, the man that's tremendously. Smart. It's smart because I heard. Because that's funny even hearing that because I heard on set the the director, uh, Milos Foreman, who, who directed, he's kind of like Oscar Gold. If you look at his filmography, he doesn't direct a lot, but everything he directs, it's fu- it gets nominated for, mm. for Oscars. But uh, I heard there was a big, like, I heard they there, there's a ton of tension on the set the entire time because they both disagreed on what the character... The director wanted as soon as... The director wanted as soon as the... Uh, Jack Nicholson, as soon as he came in, he wanted the the entire war to be in chaos already. But Jack Nicholson said, "He said no. It should be. It should only go into chaos once he's there and he starts, yeah. which is the it's the right thing to do." Mm-hmm. But I heard because of those disagreements, there was like super a lot of tension or whatever. Right. But you know, it was the right call. Mm-hmm. And Jack Nicholson also, I think he he came on set like with a big beard or something. <laughs> the director said no. He's like, he's like that's, no, all. that's, not, <laughs> he's like, that's not the character. He goes, yeah, I, I, something like that, some weird like artistic actor thing. Choice. Yeah, and he's like, sorry, pal. That's <laughs> like he not doesn't happening. have a beard in the book or yeah. anything. I don't think. And he he's immediately like, this like, this is my character yeah. though. This is who I. And George's like, no. I mean, we'll change some things, but we're not gonna fuck. You're not gonna have a beard. And I don't think he, in 1975 they would probably even allow him to have a beard. No, probably not. They shave that thing, yep. fucking tie you down, then beat the shit, shit out, out of you, out of you. <laughs> until you do. Man, you until did not. You, you did not want to have any kind of fucking mental problems back then. I mean, even like anxiety, like a. Uh, Billy. Billy is such an amazing character, played by uh, 
what's his name? Uh, Dorif. Uh, fuck, I'm going to look up his name. He's the voice actor. Brad Dorif. Brad Dorif. He's the voice actor of Chucky in Child's Play. He does all the Child's Plays. Oh, no. <laughs> wow. And he's Worm Tongue in Lord of the Rings. Oh, okay. He's been in a ton of stuff. Yeah. But uh, that's his first role ever as Billy. Wow. That is such a, f- that's the heaviest role, I think, in the entire f- film. Well, it's, oh, he is Worm Tongue. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Yep. He's yeah, great. It is, He's great. It is, a, it is very, it's a tragic story, too. It's a tragic, a, a kid who's is. just, you just can tell that it's just the thing that his parents put too much pressure on him. Yep. And it's the kind of thing where it can be too much for a kid and they just snap sometimes. Yep. And they develop this horrible stutter and he's got, and it's a great, the relationship and the character building between him and McMurphy as, you know, he has zero confidence when they first meet, but he slowly starts to gain confidence. He eventually bangs. Candy. Candy. One of them whores. Yeah. One of them <laughs> whores. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's, a, well, that's what Frank. Unfortunately say, yeah. for him, it ends in uh, tragedy, you know, tragedy because of the the evil, evil vile yeah, yeah. Nurse Ratchet. Yeah. And that's the kind of thing I'm sad that I heard that that Ratchet show wasn't very good. You know, that's what I heard too. It's currently sitting at sixty percent on Rotten Tomato, but I saw a few like posts and stuff about it, and which I I can't really take people's random people's words for it, but some people enjoyed it quite a bit. Really, I can't. yeah. So it's but here's the thing: Sarah Paulson is a phenomenal actress. Well, Say that's what you will. About that's the, show. the only thing that I would so even interested if, me yeah, at all. I wonder if she Sarah carries Paulson. it. I don't know. That's that's the uh, for that the writing has to be really good. Uh, that is an interesting like story and take. I can mm-hmm. see you know kind of wanting to see how this fucking uh, how this vile human being kind of came into power yeah. and into place. But you really got to do it right. You know, she has to become. No one just becomes a nurse ratchet. No. It's got to happen through a long, long fucking process because you just don't wake up one day and just think, I'm going to fucking torture these mental patients right. forever. People who need my help, <laughs> I'm actually going to do the complete People opposite. voluntarily come in here right. to, to get help. I'm going to make their life a living fucking hell. And that's what she does. She manipulates everyone. Well, she got drunk on power. That's yeah. That's what it was. But that's the one position, you know, that you shouldn't do that in. I mean, you shouldn't do it, period. But yeah, but doctors or like one, any yeah. kind of health profession, you shouldn't be power tripping. No. But it's also it's it's not it's like it's a combination of a hospital and a prison because mm-hmm. none of them are allowed to leave. So that's that's where I think the power trip comes from, like a warden having a power. Exactly. Trip. She is the warden of this uh, ward. You know, mm-hmm. she controls everything. So. Uh, another interesting fact about this is it was shot entirely in sequential order, minus the Fisherman's Depot. They had yeah. to film that separately, but the whole film was filmed in sequential order, which is pretty cool, in my opinion, because that'll really help you. Because all the actors on set, too, stayed in character the entire time. Uh, they definitely methoded this. Well, not... Well, everyone but Jack Nicholson. But Jack Nicholson, character. because, yeah, because he came but, in and was like, do these guys ever get out of character? But he was damn near, I mean, it was in character. Anyway, yeah, I mean, that's him anyways. That's who he is. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, he's the slot. He yeah. he wasn't a mental patient, so he was the only one. But, yeah, everyone else was stayed in character, which is mm-hmm. great. And I yeah. think if you are going to do a heavy role, then it, it does help. You don't have to do it all the time. You don't have to Daniel Day-Lewis it. No. You don't got to be fucking Abraham Lincoln for nine months living in a log cabin. <laughs> no electricity, but uh, but yeah, I, I think that's important. But yeah, films are rarely shot in order anymore. Yeah, because it's just super not super rare because it's too expensive. Well, it's but, not practical. Yeah, but exactly. every time you hear about it, it's a, it's a film that's like, oh man, you almost have to do it like that for for it to end, and then for like because all the characters, well, you know, you they can. build along it's, the way, right? And and I, we were talking about off air, and I said this film was one of those rare films that like I think would fit perfectly on Broadway, which it, it did inevitably, but because of the fact that there really are minus the fishermen, you know, where they go out, it's all filmed on this one location. So this is one of the rare occasions mm. where you can film an entire movie in sequential order, and it wouldn't it wouldn't make any difference. And I uh, like we're talking about. I think it does. It helps the actors, mm-hmm. especially a role this heavy. And like I said, you know, all the characters building, especially that chief character. Yeah, you know, and especially this is uh, Samson's first role. Oh, he too. was a he was a park He's ranger. A park ranger. They just pulled him off the street because he was the only well, guy who is, met, matched the funny, character uh, description. Yeah, the guy. You remember the guy who's at the fish. Depot or at the uh, bay or whatever, yep. the guy runs out and he's yeah. like, "This whose boat is it's this?" Like, hey, what are you guys doing? And then that, that's the doctor thing. That guy uh, was the one who recommended him. 
He's like, because they're all in Oregon. He's like, oh, yeah, wow. I, I know one guy. He's yeah. like six, because he was the only one that came. Because in the book, Chief is is huge, but mm-hmm. he was the only Native American to come that was, I guess, taller than like six foot. Yeah. So we're like, we have no fucking. <laughs> but he he was in more movies. He was in Poltergeist two. After yep. that, he was he had pretty good. Unfortunately, he, he had was, a, a relatively short life. Yeah, he did. He died at fifty three. Yeah, unfortunately. But I think he was even in uh, a western at one point. I might be getting that wrong, but I'm pretty sure he was in I Western. know Poltergeist 2 for a fact. I remember yeah. that because I used to have Poltergeist 2. But, yeah. And they do a lot of Native American stuff in Poltergeist 2. But, uh, oh, yeah. He was in uh, The Outlaw Josie Wales. Oh, duh. yeah. That's yeah. a huge, of course. That's a pretty famous Western. Yeah. he did, He's great. And the ending is so fucking powerful. I just love just seeing him run off into the woods. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, I don't know what's he going to do. But, it's, but, but they all talk about going to Canada. Yep. And if anyone could survive there, I'm guessing it's fucking Chief. Probably, he probably has. He had the a means rough. He had a it. rough life. Yeah, he from did. the small bit you hear about him and his dad and whatnot, it's but every, you know, you can't really dissect everything. But every line is just so powerful in this it film. Is. When when people talk, it's the dialogue's all, so good too. Yeah, I mean, it, like it, it captivates you yeah, throughout the film. Yeah, it, it is. really deserves. And that even the whole the World life. Series, that whole like bit of <laughs> yeah. him, I, that's it's just so powerful. It's such a mundane thing, you know, to want to get the World Series on, but it becomes like both these fucking hard nosed characters make it their fucking mission. Mm-hmm. And Murder Nurse Ratchet makes her mission to make sure that fucking series he doesn't, doesn't watch it. Yeah. And then fucking McMurphy is that mission to make sure that he does fucking watch it. Well, and and she, he had to rally the troops too. Yeah, you know? but yeah, but she he doesn't at that point he didn't understand that Nurse Ratchet was the one with you know all the cards. All the power. Yeah. <laughs> when the fact they that, were they were in Nurse Ratchet's world. Well, I mean, that's what's that's what's crazy too. You find that you know I mean everyone's seen the film, but you see that reveal too when we do re, when we do find out as an audience that Nurse Ratchet is the one who literally has the the key to let him out. I know. And and then, you know, he's kind of all baffled. And then he's like, how come none of you guys told me this? And then you find out half of them are admitted to the, or, or voluntarily And at admitted. that point, they're so fucking scared of her. Mm-hmm. They're so scared of, of anything that, uh, and some of them have been lobotomized at this point also. Yep. So, I mean, they know that she can fucking add, add a drop of the hat go, okay, take that guy in. Yeah. And you know, it's always such a powerful scene, you know, when they, the night after the big party at the very end, and you see her come in because you just know, oh, fuck. This is dude. not going to end well. Someone's dying, yep. and someone does end up dying. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Billy Bibbit. She would have <laughs> She would have ended up fucking strangling someone. Probably. It's, it's, that, it's that notion that as soon as she comes in, it's like, oh, they fucked with my world. Mm-hmm. And at this whole time, I had this thing under control, and now people don't think I have it under control. So I got to make this big fucking notion. To make sure people know that it's my world, and that's right. what he does. But I love the scene when he goes for her neck, and just Powerful. fucking because the yeah. entire time you're wanting him to do that to kill her. Yeah, and you know <laughs> exactly. Just fucking yeah. snap. I mean, and it's, it's you know dark, it's not gonna but, happen. You yeah. know it's never gonna happen. But just it's so satisfying that he even got just that much because you know just during that twenty seconds, he was like, "This is fucking worth it," and I know they're gonna fucking, you know, yep. scrape my brain. <laughs> so this is, but yeah, I love it. The That's chief such a picking crazy up the thing to do to someone. They did, it's so it happens so common, dude. It, it was, it's yeah, it's it's insane. It's such a dark, untalked about part of American history. Yeah, yeah you're you're fucking your mom. She's depressed once in a while, has exam, anxiety, doesn't want to leave the house. Lobotomy. It was it was marketed as like a cure all. Oh my god. Yeah, you got depression. Lobotomy. It's wild. Bad eyesight. <laughs> lobotomy. Back hurts. <laughs> I trust me, you won't be thinking about your back anymore. Oh my god! But yeah. So, so um, uh, something about lobotomies that is pretty astonishing. Between nineteen fifties by night from nineteen forties to nineteen fifty one, almost twenty thousand lobotomies had been performed in the United States, and proportionately more in the United Kingdom. Yeah, and they were. I, I swear to God, most of those, but were by one guy in the United States mm-hmm. by one fucking. Sixty percent of those lobotomies were patients were women. Yeah, dude. In seventy four percent of lobotomies in Ontario from nineteen forty eight to nineteen fifty two, so seventy four percent were women. But between that small time period, it's horrible. And they used an actual fucking ice pick for it. That's that's the thing. Yeah, they had a they had a real tool for it, but uh, the tool was so flimsy it would break because you had to have this big long. 
So eventually some guy was like, here, I just got this ice pick. They did start using that, and they just fucking knock it in. It's That's raw. crazy. It's my nightmare. Yeah. And you would want to die. You, you never yeah. want to live like that. No, because you're not right. I mean, like, understandable. Your shadow of, of, your, of yourself. Of yourself. Yeah. yeah. You're hoping just some giant big chief is going to fucking come and end it for you. <laughs> Put a pillow over your face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, God. but that is uh, that is the one flu of cuckoo's I love yeah. it. I mean, if you haven't seen Great it, film. that's one film that is timeless. It's it's forty years old at this point, but it it holds up. Performances are amazing. The the screenplay is amazing. It still looks phenomenal. It does. I mean, you can tell by the outfits and the clothing that it's older and mm-hmm. whatnot, but it still looks it looks amazing. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's just as as effective. I would say it was in nineteen seventy five. Yeah, I than agree. It is today. But uh, yeah. All righty. Well, that is our uh, that is our review for One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. If you guys like what you've seen here, please be sure to like this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification as we drop videos here every single day on our YouTube channel. If you're listening in audio format or want to find our podcast, you can find it on Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, and Stitcher. Our social media is Twitter, Seen It Podcast. Cash is on Twitter. That's just Cash. Instagram, Have You Seen It? Facebook, Have You Seen It? Podcast. My name is Mason Knight. That is Cash Krause. And until next time. Bye.